Hello and welcome back to another IGCSE video. In this video, we're going to discuss, do some revision or discuss some key points that could help you in paper 2. So in this video, I'm not discussing all the topics, but some topics or formulas or things that may help you. So uh, let's begin with the formulas that uh, you may need in the exam. So the first one is magnification. Magnification is used when you are looking at microscopic images or cell. The formula for a magnification is the image were image size divided by the actual size now when you're using this formula make sure that the units for image size and the actual size should be same for example if this is millimeter this should also be in millimeter and if it's micrometer the same for actual size as well you need to be able to convert from millimeter to micrometer if you're converting from a big unit to a small unit multiply by 10 power 3 if you are going from micrometer to millimeter multiply by 10 power negative 3 now, what about percentage change? This is used in experiments when, for example, in osmosis, what is the percentage change uh, when the uh, length of the potato increased? So the formula for uh, percentage uh, change equals to final minus initial value. This basically represents the change, final minus initial divided by the initial value. And then you have to multiply with this by 100 to find the percentage. Then um, next is rate of reaction. A rate of reaction is the amount of product or reactant which is used or produced per unit time. For example, if you want to calculate um, the rate of reaction for volume of oxygen produced, if, the, if you get a high value, that means the rate of reaction is high and um, a lot of oxygen is produced in a short amount of time. If you get a small value, it means that the rate is low. And if there's a graph, for example, if there's a graph, and if there's a steep line, that means, and this is time in seconds, and this is, for example, volume of oxygen, a steep graph means this is a higher rate. If the graph is less steep, that means it has lower rate. A rate of reaction is lower. Now, um, the next is surface area to volume ratio. This is useful for, uh, useful in diffusion or cell biology. So you just have to write down uh, you, you just have to divide them divide surface area over volume so if you have a cube you need to write down the surface area which is going to be 6 multiplied by side square this is for surface area and uh, for volume it's going to be side cube this is for volume and the unit is going to be meter cube or centimeter cube whatever that is and surface area is going to be meter square. So the reason we're multiplying side square by six is because a cube has six sides, right? That's why we're multiplying by six and side square is going to give you the, the formula for area, a side multiplied by side. Okay, now we can uh, discuss some reactions that you may be asked. Photosynthesis is a process in which green plants make food in the presence of sunlight and water. Uh, chlorophyll is also very important because if the cells or, or if the plant does not have chlorophyll it cannot do photosynthesis so this is the reaction and you need to know this six carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide reacts with water it produces uh, glucose and oxygen you need to have sun light and water now what about aerobic respiration so um, this glucose is produced right this glucose either in plants or in humans or animals we uh, it, we have glucose this glucose is necessary to produce energy by aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration always occurs in the presence of oxygen let's write down the equa equation so you have glucose first c6h12o6 this is glucose it combines with oxygen oxygen is important and it's going to give us six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules and energy this energy is used to carry out day-to-day -day activities now there's another process in which energy can be created but that is without oxygen that is called anaerobic respiration so anaerobic respiration occurs both in human but yeast can also do anaerobic respiration so what happens is that for example when the, when um, when we are running or where the amount of oxygen is not enough to um, to break down glucose so in that case our cells start uh, breaking down glucose without oxygen let's write out the reaction for that you don't need to write the um, the simple equation for that 
but you need to know the word equation so that is going to be glucose is going to give us lactic acid uh, later when uh, when there is enough oxygen for example when you stop running running you notice that you start breathing really heavily right this is used to recover the oxygen debt this lactic acid is then going to be broken down again into carbon dioxide and water now what about yeast yeast is um yeast does anaerobic respiration on glucose to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide and it has different purposes for example uh, it's used to make bread so you have glucose c6 h12 o6 and yeast respires that anaerobically to give us um ethanol c2 h5 oh and carbon dioxide so glucose is going to give us ethanol plus carbon dioxide all right now we will discuss some key points or some comparisons uh, that are important to know so the first one is uh, what is the difference between meiosis and mitosis remember mitosis is a nuclear division whereas meiosis is a reduction division um, meiosis produces genetically different cells whereas mitosis produces exactly identical cells they are both same in meiosis the chromosome number number half to 23 from 46 to 23 in human beings while in mitosis the um, chromosome number is maintained it remains 40 uh, it remains 46 now what is the difference between prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cells so prokaryotic cells are unicellular that means they have only one cell and then uh, they don't have nucleus they have a uh, genetic material for example the dna is not inside the nucleus but it's in the cytoplasm and they are much smaller and they have very simple structure. Uh, so one example of prokaryotic cell is bacteria. Uh, eukaryotic organisms are multicellular. They do have a nucleus and the DNA is inside that nucleus. They are, um, they are larger. They're, the size of cells are larger. And um, they have complex organelles, complex structures. They have cytoplasm, nucleus, and other organelles. Examples of eukaryotic cells include animal cells, plant cells, fungi, and protists. Next, we have the difference between diffusion and osmosis. So diffusion is the movement of particles from region of higher concentration to lower concentration. Osmosis is uh, generally, osmosis is for water molecules, okay? So it's the movement of particles of, of water molecules from region of higher po uh, water potential to the region of lower water potential. But one more important thing is that in osmosis, you need it needs to pass through a partially permeable membrane. It could be an artificial partially permeable membrane, or it it um it could even be cell membrane, because cell membrane is considered a partially permeable membrane. So when water moves, uh, from the higher uh, potential to the lower potential through the cell membrane, that is considered osmosis as well. Now, uh, what if you're comparing between diffusion and active transport? So the thing is, diffusion is down the concentration gradient. That means it's going from higher concentration to lower concentration, whereas active transport is up the concentration gradient. I'll write down here to make it more clear. Down the concentration gradient, active transport is up the concentration gradient. This means it's going against the, uh, the concentration. It's going from a lower region to a higher region. Okay, so since it's going against, it's going to be needing energy that's why it's called active it needs energy diffusion on the other hand does not need energy so even non uh, non-living things diffusion occurs in non-living things as well for example if you spray a perfume in one part of the room it, it, the perfume particles are going to diffuse across active transport is used in in hum, in um in living in living things for example if if there is a cell and there is some um, protein or some uh, some particles which are outside. Um, taking them inside will need energy by the help of active transport. Now we can compare aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. So we already discussed that before. Aerobic respiration needs O2. This does not need O2. Aerobic respiration produces more energy, more ATP molecules, whereas anaerobic respiration produces less energy. And then there's also, you can uh, look at the definitions above. Now what about plant cells and animal cells? Plant cells and animal cells have a lot of similarities, but there are some key differences as well, which we'll discuss here. Plant cells have a cell wall. 
Animal cells do not have a cell wall. Plant cells also have um, large vacuoles. Animal cells may have small temporary vacuoles. And then uh, because there's a uh, plant cells have a, a cell wall, they have a fixed shape, whereas animal cells do not have a fixed shape because there is there's an absence of cell wall. If you look at uh, comparisons, both of them have nucleus, both of them have cytoplasm and cell membrane. They also have other organelles, for example, ribos ribosomes and mitochondria. If a plant cell is a green, if this plant cell is coming from a green leaf, it also has chloroplast. Now we'll discuss the differences between transpiration and translocation. Transpiration is the loss of water vapor from the leaf. So water evaporates from the surface of mesophyll cells into the air spaces that are present inside the leaf and then it diffuses out of the leaf through the stomata in the form of water vapor. Now what is translocation? Translocation is the movement of food which could either be sucrose or amino acid in the phloem. It moves from the source to sink. Okay. Now what is the difference between hormones and neurotransmitters? Hormones are chemical substances which are released by a gland into the uh, bloodstream. The, uh, hormones are slower but their effects are more long-lasting. Some examples of hormones are estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, insulin, etc. Whereas neurotransmitters are chemical substances which are released at the synapse. They, uh, they are much faster, but they only affect nearby, neutron, uh, the nearby neurons. Now we'll discuss some other key points. Okay, so uh, in the human body, we have different uh, different substances which can be broken down into other bro uh, simpler substances by the help of enzymes. So starch can be broken down into simpler sugar with the help of amylase enzyme. Proteins are broken down into amino acid by protease enzyme. And fats or oils are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol by the lipase enzyme. The, all of them are present in different uh, different regions of the digestive system. Now, um, these are complex substances and they are made up of some simple substances. We'll go through this one by one. Starch, glycogen, and cellulose are made up of glucose. Proteins are made up of amino acids. And fats are, and oils are made up of fatty acids and glycerol. So, so fat has both fatty acid and glycerol and oil also has fatty acid and glycerol. Now we'll discuss some uses of these substances. So uh, nectar, which is produced by the flower, is used to in attract insects for pollination. Uh, plants store food in the form of starch. Cellulose is used to build cell walls. Glucose is used in respiration and it's used to provide energy, both in aerobic and in anaerobic respiration. Sucrose is used to transport influence. Amino acids are used to make proteins. Now, um, these are some other key points related to transport in animals. So remember, a blood is made up of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, as well as plasma. We'll go through the function of each of these. Red blood cells are used to transport oxygen inside the body. WBC are white blood cells. They are used to uh, carry out. They are used for defense purposes, so they can do phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is a type of endocytosis process in which cells engulf uh, particles such as bacteria to um for for our, for our immunity. And antibodies are uh, specialized cells which are produced by our immune system that can identify and neutralize foreign substances, for example, bacteria and viruses. This is also for defense purposes. And then we have platelets. Uh, platelets is used for blood clotting. For example, whenever there is an injury, you will notice that your blood stops. It dries up and it stops flowing. This is to uh, protect um, uh, our body from losing a lot of blood. In clotting, basically fibrinogen is converted into fibrin to form a mesh. And it prevents more blood from flowing out. Then we have plasma. All of these uh, are present inside a plasma. Plasma is used to transport blood cells, ions, nutrients, urea, hormones, and carbon dioxide throughout the body. Now, uh, lymphocytes are used for antibody production. Phagocytes are used to engulf pathogens by phagocytosis. Both of these are white blood cells, WBCs. Now, if you want to uh, learn important biology definitions, I have made this video. You can check this out and I've shared the link in the description below. Now, um, th obviously, this was a short review and it did not cover all the points, but um, I suggest that you also go through food tests, 
uh, some diagrams for example the differences between plant and animal cells heart kidneys eyes and more i hope this video does help you thank you